Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath and Merry Christmas. I have a fun fact for you this morning. Are you ready for it? Okay. So it was 11 years ago in 2010 that Christmas fell on a Sabbath. 11 years ago. So today we have a double blessing. And that blessing is to celebrate the coming of our Lord and Savior as a babe into this world. And at the same time, we also remember our Lord and Savior as creator as well. That is a double blessing. Praise God for our double blessing today. I would like to welcome each and every one of you here to our worship service this morning. And I'd also like to welcome those who are watching online as well. And I'd like for our Camelback members to do something for me. Would you please stand if you are a Camelback member? Very good. Now, Camelback members, I want you to look around. That means that everyone you see sitting is a guest. And we want to make sure they are welcomed and that they feel very, very special in being here today. appreciate our Camelback members. Before I could even get it out, they already knew what to do. We just want to welcome each and every one of you, guests and members alike, and we have a very special worship service here today planned. Pastor Mark will be delivering a short homily and Yelena and her Christmas team will be leading out in our program fittingly titled A Happy Merry Christmas Sabbath. A Happy Merry Christmas Sabbath. But before we begin our officially our worship service um, this morning, we do have some church business. We have a second reading for some membership transfers. Um, we have transferring out Heather Baldwin Verheel to the Metropolitan Plymouth um, Church in Michigan. And we have Wanessi Haley to the Glendale um, Adventist Church here in Arizona and Phoenix. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Okay. All in favor say aye. Are there any opposed? <laughs> then the motion is carried. Our call to worship verse this morning is found in Luke chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, and it reads as follows. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Everyone, let's say together, goodwill toward men. Father in heaven, we again recognize your presence here with us today. We ask, Lord, that you would receive our worship. We are so grateful for the double blessing of recognizing Jesus coming as a babe 
and lying in a manger, we also recognize him triumphantly as creator and king of all. And we thank you for Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to invite, um, I don't see many of them, but I know they must be here. I know many of them are already in the play. But I would like to invite all of our children who are here to come forward. We need them. We're on a special mission today. So please come forward, children. There's one, there's two. Bribe them. Yeah, we're, we're bribing you. We have something special for you. They can be over 40. <laughs> and if there's some that are children at heart, they can come too. Come on up here, come on. Come on, Brianna. I know that, come on, Moon, yeah. Um, we have uh, Bella coming, now they're coming, very good. Now we don't have a children's story per se today, but the whole program and the whole worship service will be catered to all of us being able to um, witness something very special around Jesus' birth. But can you tell me where Jesus was found when the shepherds saw him? What was he lying in? Does anybody know what he was lying in? Bella. He was lying in a manger. And we are going to start our first praise song today with you guys helping us. Surprise. So everybody stand up. And we're going to sing Away in a Manger. Stand up and help us sing it. The words are right up there. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. A star in the bright sky looked down where he lay. A little Lord Jesus asleep. something special for Christmas because your Camelback Church family loves you so much. We have these gifts for you so you can come and get one. And also if you can spot out a child or two in the audience that did not get one and give one to them, that would be great. <laughs> Raise your hand if you didn't get one. And if you know what, someone that should have gotten one that is not here today, you can raise your hand for them too. Yeah, make sure those who are raising their hands get one, okay? They're all the same. We love you guys. Have a Merry Christmas. Two, three, that one worked, got it. Merry Christmas, everybody. 
Longa, thank you for coming this morning. I know you had some busy things to do like candy canes and presents, but uh, this was a big deal. This is like Melanie said, this is the first time in 11 years that Sabbath has fallen on a Sabbath. And my question to you, you can go look it up. I'm not going to give you the answer. Did the first Christmas happen on a Sabbath? That's for you to figure it out. When I look at God, when I, when I see his great majesty and his providence and what he has done for us, nothing is an accident. Nothing is an accident in Jesus' world for us. 6,000 years ago, we messed up good. The sin fell upon Eve, and then it just got passed down to us, and we fell into the devil's trap, believing that the world and its creations would be able to fill us. We had a great emptiness inside of us when they left the garden, when Adam could no longer walk in the dew of the day with the Lord, to be able to walk in the grass and name the animals, to be able to look into his eyes and talk with them and walk with them. A very sad day when he was asked to leave. And for 6,000 years, we have suffered that loneliness. Feel lonely inside? Down deep in that little corner of your heart, there's a lonely part. It's the E.T. in us that says, I want to go home. I want to go home and be with you, Jesus. I want to be with you. For 4,000 years, God said, well, I got to try to win them back, but I can't make them. Because there is no mandate in God's eyes. There's no making you do anything. He attracts us back. And so he began the sacrificial system right off the bat. And when Adam and Eve left the garden, they were probably clothed in lambskins. It would make sense in my eyes and in God's eyes is that what he would do. And he started to set up a sacrificial system of the first lamb born in, in each, each flock was laid aside to be able to be a sacrifice for our sins, for us to be together with God. And I think we understood it maybe for a little bit. There was still a separation between us and God. Remember, the temple always faced west or so that we would turn our back to the east, to the other gods of the world, and keep our face towards God. Everything had meaning. Everything had meaning from the holy place with the candles and with the, with the bread and with the incense and everything points towards Jesus. It was shaped in the, in a, in a, like a cross on the inside. No accident. We still missed him. We were scared of him. We didn't know how to face God. It had to be a, a pillar of light during the day or during the evening, and, and it was a, a cloud shrouded at night. There was still some fear because the devils had us fearing God. Let me tell you something, guys. Don't have to fear God. Not the way the devil wants us to. We tried to figure out a few ways God did, of the way he does things, so that we wouldn't be afraid of him. Instead of, he had tried to appear to Moses and he had to put Moses in the rock, remember that story? But he called Moses his friend and Moses was not afraid to talk to God. He was even willing to give his life for us. Isn't that wonderful? For his Israelites were messing up bad, just like Jesus. He said, I'm gonna give my life to you. So what the Israelites did, because they could not even speak the name Yahweh, because they thought their tongues would get cut up or their throats would fall out. They were so scared of God. And so they started to give him things that reminded us of his character. El Shaddai, which means Almighty God. Adonai El Re, God who sees me. Isn't it nice to know that God sees us? The, the prodigal son, it says that while we were still afar off, God saw him and he got up and he ran to him and he threw his arms around him. He didn't ask him what he was doing, worried about him and, and persecuted him. He threw his arms around him and said, kill the, 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 the fatted calf, put the ring on his finger, put the robe on him, put the shoes on his feet because my son and daughters that were lost are now how found. God coming up with beautiful names. Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. The world is looking for peace. You are looking for peace. We can find peace only in Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a gaping hole in the middle of our solar plexus. It's just screaming for peace with all the stuff that's going on in the world. And he says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. We get to have him inside of us like Mary had Jesus inside of her. Pregnant women glow. My wife, when she had her babies, I'd always walk up to her. You're glowing like a light bulb. She's going, I don't feel like a light bulb. 
but she looked like one anyway because that's what pregnant women look like. But with Jesus, can you imagine what that felt to have, have Jesus stir inside when she met her beautiful Elizabeth and the baby leapt in her womb? My favorite, Jehovah Ra, the Lord is my shepherd. A murderer, an adulterer, sat down and wrote that psalm because he felt the need, that solar plexus pain, and said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because he, you lead me by still waters. You make me lay down in the green pastures. You restore my soul. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, the devil. Why? Because thou art with me. The greatest name, one of the greatest names, I can't say them all great because there sure are some great ones. Ready? Jesus. Yeshua, which means I saved my people from their sins. The angel told Joseph, and Joseph went, whoa, it's going to be our son, is how he described him. And then he says, he's going to save their people from their sins. And he says, and they will call him Emmanuel which means God what? God with us. 6,000-year-old problem solved at 4,000 as Jesus came on the sins. He, he is born. Who doesn't love a baby? If he were born in the palace, I don't think we could have related to him. Would we have voted for him? Probably not. Just another Herod. Who knows? But he came as a baby. Who doesn't like a baby? I just see the beautiful baby in the back, little sly. That he came as in a manger so that the shepherds would get it. And so the magi, the foreigners would get it. And he, got, he came as that so the haughty would get him too, the Pharisees. You think, oh, those weren't really his people. Oh, yes, they were. They are still. God says, I came to save all of my people from their sins. And that's everybody, Right? Some Pharisees made it. Are there some Pharisees in the audience? Are there some shepherds out there? Did you realize that when, here's God doing what God does well too, right? So they get to this manger and Joseph looks in there and sees the floor covered with manure and looks at Mary and Mary looks back and says, well, was that an accident? No, no. He picks up the shovel and he starts to shovel it all aside, right? Makes this little blanket out there, puts it out. She's been riding that donkey all day. She's hurting. She's going to have this baby. She goes into labor pains right there, right there in the cold, right? She says, wait a minute. I got to get the trough ready. And she gets these claws and starts to, to wipe it down to get the rest of the water and the stuff. And that makes it nice. And then lays these, these beautiful pieces of cloth across. And my question to you is, where'd you get the cloths from? Did you bring the on? She came on the donkey? Did you know in those days when they were going to hire a shepherd to be able to, if you were a priest in the temple, you would send them cloths. And those swaddling clothes were supposed to be wrapped around the firstborn lamb of every ewe as a set aside for the temple to be sacrificed. It's no accident that Jesus was wrapped in those same cloths as the shepherds walked in and they could smell it. And that's a familiar smell to them. They didn't expect Jesus to come like that, but they understood it. They understood babies. They understand the swat and clothes. They got it. And the Magi did too. Wise men still seek him. Wise men still seek him. So today for Christmas, I would like to remind you something. That just as the Magi decided to go another direction and spread the good news, and just as the shepherds rejoiced, like crazy, running through Bethlehem in the middle of the night, screaming, the Messiah is here, he's here, he's right down there in the manger. Come on, Dad, you got to see what we see. Our sins are forgiven. Not everybody got that. All Jerusalem was disturbed. But not you. Not you. You get a no. Thank you for coming today. We have a beautiful play. As you watch this play, just take in the aroma of the stable. Take in the aroma of God's love understand that we now are his messengers. We're the shepherds. We're the magi. We're the Pharisees. We have to go and spread the word that Jesus Christ is Lord and come back to be with us. God bless you. Merry Christmas. And let's enjoy the play today as we sing together.
Humanity had been looking for its savior ever since the promise had been given to Adam and Eve. The promise had been repeated through the generations of the descendants of Adam. Seth, Enos, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Arpashat, Shelah, Eber, Peleg, Ru, Sarah, Nahor, Terah, and then Abraham. God repeated the promise to Abraham and began a special nation to bless the world. There were 14 generations from Abraham to David and another 14 from David to the exile in Babylon and 14 more then to the birth of the Messiah. For generations and generations, humanity had been praying, O come, O come, Emmanuel. fullness of time had come. The angel Gabriel was sent to the virgin betrothed to Joseph of the house of David. The name of the virgin was Mary. Do not fear, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. For this reason also, the holy thing born of you shall be called the Son of God. Now all this happened in order to make come true what the Lord had said through the prophet. A virgin will become pregnant and have a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. A decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled 
and Joseph also went up from Nazareth to the city of David, Bethlehem, because there was a house in the lineage of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child of the Holy Spirit. Please turn in your hymnals to page 140. Please turn to him, number 135. gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. Oh, 
this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us.
Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. His name shall be God with us, Emmanuel. Please turn to hymn number 124, Away in a Manger, first verse. with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. And from his fullest have we all received grace upon grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. sing joy to the world you can sing with me joy to the world region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night please turn to hymn number 139 39. We'll sing four verses, enough for us to learn it together. <laughs> Dread has 
An angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. The shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. One twenty two, one twenty two. First two verses. Oh, 
wise men from the east followed his star, which went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts. Please turn to hymn 137. continue. The scene is complete. Mary and Joseph, the angels, the shepherds, the wise men, all of us here this morning. Let us read together. For God so loved me that he gave his only son, that if I believe in him, I will not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world, not to condemn me, but that I might be saved through him. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with me. For he shall save me from my sins. Jesus has redeemed me. Jesus has called me, Camelback family, by name. I am his, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And, and if you are thankful, Jesus came the first time as a baby. 
and it's coming soon, the second time, as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and you desire to give him the gift of your heart again today. Turn to hymn number 27. Let's sing verses 1, 4, and 5. today we set our hearts on you. You're trustworthy. You are faithful. You are a restorer and you are a redeemer, the giver of the gift of peace. May we be filled with the wonder of Mary, with the obedience of Joseph, with the joy of the angels, with the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and of course, the peace of Jesus Christ. We ask that as others see your peace in us and we begin to glow, let us recognize you as Savior, the light of the world, and ask for your presence. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we ask now that you bless us forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen. Thank you for coming today. Merry Christmas.